Today's video kicks off a brand new learning series in acrylic pouring that's not only going to teach you how to thin paints for many techniques, but also explores the possibilities of combining multiple techniques to create one fantastic painting. So put on your learning caps and let's get started. Hello, my friends. Welcome to another video. So today we are using Warren Penny, Champagne Gold, both by DecoArt. Then we have Mars Black by Grumbacher. We have Prussian Blue by Amsterdam. We have Cobalt Blue Hue by Grumbacher. We have Cobalt Blue Ultramarine. <laughs> I'm like, what did I do? Mix up two of the same colors. Uh, fluorescent blue. Then we have Windsor Newton Cadmium Orange Hue. And then Grumbacher Process Yellow. Now, what I did here was I mixed these two together to make a custom color. All right, a custom dark blue color. And then I mixed these two together to make a beautiful cornflower blue color and then I mixed these two together to make a beautiful tangerine color so let me get set up and we I, I'm telling you right now I'm in a mood today <laughs> hopefully this goes well let me set up and we'll get started so today's new series is called going with the flow we're going to use our intuition and multiple techniques to create a series of paintings. You'll be learning how to combine these techniques and also how to mix up your paints for each. And as always, I'm off to a rough start. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I went to go fix my sleeve with a cup of paint in my hand and you just saw that right there. Boom. Great start, Tammy. Anyway, we're going to ignore that. I first start off with a puddle pour technique, which is very simple to do. Again, I'm going to be showing you in this video how these paints were mixed. And in my mixing tutorial, I give you lots of valuable tips. So make sure you stay tuned for that. My intuition, my inspiration, I wanted to create this painting. I had this image in my head of the beautiful black sand beaches in Hawaii. So of course that involves using some blue for water. Now I took my blues and just did the puddle. I took a tongue depressor. You can use a popsicle stick, a skewer, and just ran it through to create this design. Then I decided to tilt it. Now my idea for this painting was to use multiple techniques, as I said, but I wanted to create this image, a beautiful blue ocean in Hawaii that had black sand beach. I also wanted that black sand beach to have a ton of seashells on it. So I thought to myself, how can I achieve that using multiple techniques? And these are the techniques that I came up with. The whole point of this series is to have some fun and to just kind of explore combining techniques together. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be all acrylic techniques. I'm sure you're going to see some resin in the future and some mixed media. But for this one, it is all acrylic pouring paints. So now the next idea I had was to use these cute mini copper cups to pour some sand colors right down the center of my canvas doing the kiss technique. That is what this technique is known as. You layer your colors in the cup and then you put them very close together and let the paints kiss. It creates a really cool pattern in the paint. So once I was done with this, 
the idea I had in mind was to have this colored paint, this copper colored paint underneath black and white paint so that I could come in with the next technique and create my seashells. However, when I tilted the canvas, I made a major boo-boo. And you're going to see that in a minute. But first, I'm putting down some white paint and some black paint. The white paint, just because I felt like there wasn't enough white in that puddle. And the black, because again, I wanted to stretch that over the top of those colors to do the next technique, which I will explain once we reach that point. So in typical Tammy fashion, and I'm sure this happens to a lot of you too, I started off great. There was a point though that I should have stopped and I didn't. And that point is right about now. So right there, I should have stopped and had just that black area turn into my seashells, but I screwed up and I tilted the wrong way. And now you're seeing what the painting is offering me. <laughs> I have a big area of, of land mass and a small ocean. So the next technique, which is called chameleon cells, is taking some silicone, putting it on the end of a stick and just poking it into the surface of the paint. And what this does is it creates little tiny cells where you want them. I purposely used glue and water today to thin my paints down with because I wanted to be in charge of where the cells showed up. When you use something like Floetrol, it decides where the, flow, the cells are going to show up. So I wanted to be able to do this chameleon cell technique. However, because I tilted the wrong way, I lost a lot of my color. So you're going to see here in a minute that I have my little shells in some places and then in some places it didn't show up because I tilted the wrong way. And hey, that happens. But I do redeem myself at the end of this video. So make sure that you stay tuned for that. So now that my chameleon cell technique didn't work in some of the areas, I decided to come in and do another technique, which is the swipe technique. Now, because I had added silicone to the stick and plopped it into the surface all over the place, I now have silicone on my painting. So when I'm swiping, it's going to sell up like crazy for me. So, you know, even though my, my little shell idea didn't work, the painting still looks really cool in the end. It looks like a black sand beach that has water almost like shining through the surface of it. It's really cool. You'll see here in a minute. Again, though, this series is meant to have some fun relax, forget about your problems. So doing these multiple techniques will definitely help with that. So once I swipe and I hit that surface with the flame of the torch, you can see the cells pop up like crazy. And that's simply because when I swiped, I spread out that silicone all over the place. But again, I'm okay with this painting. I'm happy with it. I'm going to save it and let it dry and possibly, probably most definitely do another layer of art on top of it. So I have my very small ocean area. I have my sandbar and then I have my black sand beach that looks like dried, cracked black volcano ash that the, the water is seeping up through. I thought it was actually a really cool look. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'm sure in the future you will see this painting come back with a second layer of art. We'll add some waves and some resin movement on, on the surface and it will help a lot. So anyway, as I said, this is a learning series also. So now we need to show you how to thin your paints. But before we do that, please remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. 
this is the portion of the video where I'm going to show you how I thin today's paints down with glue and water only. Now, why did I choose glue and water only? The reason why I chose glue and water only was because I did not want cells to pop up in my artwork. As I said earlier, I wanted to be in control of where the cells showed up. Had I used Floetrol or had I used a pouring medium, they tend to promote cells and lacing. So the only way for me to kind of calm that down from happening would be to use a glue recipe or just straight water. I like to use something that, that you know, water, especially with metallics, when you're using a lot of metallics like I did today, you want to be careful of water because it can make it look grainy looking. So that's why I added in the glue all also. Now for measurements, I want to just say, you can never take measurements on YouTube as gospel. Meaning, yes, we tell you how we thin down our paints, but here's the thing. If I go ahead and thin this down, this copper from Amsterdam, with my glue all mixture and some water, and I give you the exact measurements, and then you go and try to thin down a deco art with the same measurements, it's going to be way off. So you have to first take into account the type of paint the artist is using. But on top of that, you have to take into consideration what color you're using. For example, Amsterdam copper took less water to thin down than this Prussian blue did. So even though they're both medium body paints, it can take different measurements, even in the same paint line. Some colors just take more. So that's why you have to be careful when you watch these tutorials. You, you really need to grasp the concept that all paints, even colors, are made differently. So therefore, they can uh, require different amounts. So what will be a huge help for you if you're a beginner is the consistency chart. What the consistency chart is, and it, it goes along with a video that I made, which by the way is in the description. You can click on that video, go down to the, the description of that video, and you're going to see a link that you could click on. You click on that link, you get to the chart, and then you print it out at home. You watch this video. In this video, I show you there are four categories for thinning down paint and acrylic pouring, pretty much. You have your thickest consistency, which is the bloom technique. You have your next category, which would cover all of the things like a ring pour, a flip cup, a swipe, a chain pull, all your... your other acrylic pouring techniques then you have well not all of them you have the third category which is the dutch pour consistency and then you have the fourth category which is the pearl cell like the thinnest of the thinnest of all the techniques okay so four categories in that video i show you how to mix paints for all of those categories and i show you how to use the chart now why is this chart important because in this video today, I'm going to tell you my paints are a number three on the consistency chart. So now what you can do is you can get one of those charts. You can mix up your paints according to whatever recipe you're using. Let's say you're a Floetrol user. You can put your, your one part of paint, one part of Floetrol, and then add some water in it. Take some of that paint drip it on that chart, hold it up, count to five. If it says, if it reaches or drips down to the number three, you now know that you have the same consistency paint as I do. And once you have that one color perfect, then it's easy to do the rest of the colors, okay? You can not even measure from that point. 
all right? You can just put some paint in a cup, whatever size you're using, whether it be big or small, quarter full with paint, pour flow trial till it reaches about halfway up and then start adding your water in. That's how I mix my colors up. But again, you need that guide. So using that consistency chart will help you get that guide with the first color and then you can copy with your rest of your colors you're mixing up copy to make them look like that by adding you know the flow trial in the water okay so first i need to make my pouring medium so today my pouring medium is going to be made out of glue and water i'm going to fill this cup up and again this is just a small amount i'm using to show you how to um thin down the paints but you can make a whole big jug of this and save it. It will last for months. I'm on the ounces here. Am I on the ounces? Yes, I'm on the ounces. So I have one ounce of glue. To that, I'm going to add half the amount of water. So 0.50. If for some reason you do not use ounces in your country, just go to Google and look for a ounces converter calculator. Right on the dot, okay? That mixed together is my pouring medium for my colors. All right, so you mix those together and now that is your pouring medium. So that's what we're gonna use to thin down our colors plus some more water, all right? So now what we'll do is we will put a cup on there. Let's tear it out. All right, we'll go ahead and add our copper into the cup. Okay, so we're at 0 0.30. I'm gonna put double that amount of my homemade pouring medium in there. And I'm going to put in 0 0.60 of this here. All right, we're gonna take it and stir it together. All right, we're gonna tear it out again and I'm gonna slowly add the water until it reaches the right consistency so that you have that measurement. And that's it. This is the consistency about a number three that I'm using for today, all right? That's how all of my colors are mixed. So now that I have this guide, because I know it's at a number three, if you have that consistency chart, you can use this one color and then just take your other colors now that you need to mix up. Not even measure, just put some paint in a cup, pour some of that in there. The water is the most important part. Sometimes you will go ahead and add your pouring medium in and even before you get to the water part, you'll test it and it's already at the right spot because again, colors are made differently. So some will take water, some won't. But as long as you have that first color to go by, then you know, you know, what they kind of need to look like. And here's the thing, my friends, they do not need to be identical. They need to be very close to each other, but if you have a color that's a little tiny bit thicker or a little tiny bit thinner, it'll dry fine, all right? I think a lot of people get hung up on the measurements and think that they need to be exact or else the, the technique doesn't work. But I'll tell you right now, I can do this technique here that I'm doing today with, you know, 
paints that are thicker than this, it'll work. It's just, you know, you got to kind of use common sense when it comes to some of the techniques like the, the Dutch pour. The Dutch pour will work with the thinner paints and it will work with the thicker paints, except you're going to have to put the blow dryer on much higher and you're going to have to be able to control it. And, you know, if you hit it at the wrong angle with the air, it's going to splatter everywhere. So, you know, you can technically still do the blow dryer. Uh, the Dutch pour, even with the Bloom recipe paints that are really thick, it's just you got to be able to control the air and have a strong enough dryer. Okay, so that's thick. That's mixed up to the same consistency as my other paints. And that is how the paints were mixed. So here's a little bonus footage. I needed to redeem myself on these chameleon cells. So... What I did was I poured another puddle pour on the canvas, tilted it around, and this is where we pick up. I did another kiss pour. This time I didn't use my copper cups only because I had to have a little more paint for this size canvas and what I was doing. So I used bigger cups. But anyway, same colors again. I did the kiss pour, and then what I did was I tilted the colors all around first before I put the black paint down. It made a huge difference. That's what I should have did in the first one. I should have tilted out the colors and then came back and just swiped some black paint over the colored area. You're going to see it made a huge difference in this one. The first one I had taken that black paint and poured a big puddle in the center and tried to tilt it which ended up having me tilt off all of my colors. So by swiping a little bit of black paint over the entire surface, you will see that it works a lot better. But hey, I wanted to try something new. That was the whole point of this video and inspire people to try different things together. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something more importantly, and I hope if you're not subscribed, you consider doing so. So now you can see that I was able to achieve my little seashells. What my, my vision was for the first painting was to have those coming down through the center, almost like a inlet that you can walk out and have the ocean on both sides. But we'll try that again in another video. And I will say this one here because this will make an awesome background for a painting. You don't have to be done once you do an acrylic pour. You can let it dry and then you can expand on that, add to it. I have lots of mixed media videos where I do that. I have a lot of resin videos. Look through my channel. I'm sure you'll find something that will help. As for the sides, what I do is I wait for this to dry and then I'll paint them black. I never fuss with the sides. It's just much easier to paint them black. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget every Sunday, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I release a new video. Check out the description for all of the information that you need regarding products, ways to follow me, ways to support the channel, and ways to contact me. And until the next time, happy pouring.